I think the most controversial thing Jesus says in the gospel, right at the beginning, he says, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault. He says, go and talk to your brother. And there's a lot of presumption involved in this because most of the time we just say, no, I won't. There's like, uh, like there's a presumption that the relationship can, can get through it. There's a presumption that we know how to, how to do this so that things don't blow up and we don't offend them and it turns into a fight or something like that. But I think we, we have certain things that make it more difficult and, and harder for us to sta- understand what Jesus says to us today. Part of it might just be the age that we live in. Like, like our, our time, our age says uh, love means you, you don't hurt anybody in any way, you know. So uh, if you hurt somebody's feelings, then you probably weren't loving them, which is not true. But that's, that's like in the air that we breathe. Another thing might be our region, too. We're, we're here in the Midwest, and niceness is a high value for us, you know. It's important to us. And then the last thing, too, might just be the culture of the church that we live in currently, where we say we have to be nice, otherwise we're, we're a bad witness. But I've, I've been reflecting on this and not really happy for this realization because I, I don't like conflict either, but I've just been finding out how this avoidance of hard conversations, of conflict, is the hidden cause of so much harm in the church. Now, there are, there are plenty of things that work against us. There's like, in the church, a lack of prayer, a lack of catechesis, a lack of practice. There's serious scandals, there's selfishness, or territorialism, or, or lukewarmness. But I think, actually, this av- attitude of avoidance is beneath those and actually influences a lot of those other problems. Because you, you know how avoidance works. You, you, everybody here has been through this. When we avoid conflict, we end up avoiding a person. And when we do that, then we sacrifice or kill the relationship. And so what, it, what, what the fruits are are like apathy and superficiality. There's sometimes just a silent departure from the relationship. And we don't even know what happened. When we choose to value harmony over engagement with a person, what we end up doing is we, we value false peace over love. What's always involved in a hard conversation like this is the question, do you love me enough to tell me the truth? And when we avoid it, we end up saying, no, I do not. So at the beginning of this, I, I have to confess my own weakness because like I said, I'm not comfortable with conflict and very often I choose to avoid it and it's not good, but I've done that here, here with all of you at St. Luke also. I think what sort of looms over our shoulder whenever you talk about conflict, what makes it harder is past bad experiences that make us say, I never want to do that again. Or times where we entered into conflict and goodwill, but then there was manipulation or some sort of unfair attack involved. Or sometimes it's just ideas like the idea that, uh, that it's not allowed to disagree with a priest or the idea, the bad idea, that Christians don't do conflict. And again, it's a confusion of love with niceness. Sometimes we say, as long as things are smooth, that's a sign of love. But I think, actually, it can be the opposite. That when things are smooth, but bubbling under the surface, it's a sign of a lack of love. But again, what good we sacrifice when we choose avoidance rather than a hard conversation or conflict, they are challenging, but look at what they bring. You know this if you've ever been through this. These kind of conversations bring trust and respect and love and deeper relationship and improvement and growth. So I've experienced this. Like in my time here at St. Luke, there have been a few people who have come up to me gently, respectfully, and challenged something or asked a question or, or disagreed with me about something. And just naturally, as, as, a, as a just natural response from that, I find that I respect them and trust them more than the person who just says, just says yes and doesn't ever say anything, you know? So what's the difference between the conflict that brings good fruit and the conflict that we all want to avoid? I think it's this, okay? There's a conflict that threatens and a conflict that is secure. And the kind that threatens is the kind that kills. This is a conversation where the relationship is threatened, where the relationship itself is on the line where it's like, you have to answer this right, otherwise I'm leaving. And then, of course, this actually isn't conflict. This is, this is like, there's no freedom to disagree, actually. It's not conflict, it doesn't really help anything. It just, it just threatens to kill. So that's, that's like a threatening conflict. On the other hand, though, there's a secure conflict. And this is, this is what is behind 
why, why families, why spouses, why the people who love each other most can also fight the most. And pretty intensely sometimes. We raise our voices, we get red in the face, but we know that in the end, it'll all be okay. That this will pass. So what's involved in this kind of secure conflict? Well, there are certainly things like humility and vulnerability and sometimes choosing the right words in the right time. There's also, of course, love involved. That the conversation happens because one person wants the good of another. But I think it's three things, three specific things that separate secure conflict from the kind that threatens and kills. The first one is this mutual agreement, this understanding that I will correct you and I expect you to correct me. This is hopefully there between spouses. Like I know that I will be wrong sometimes and so I need actually you to correct me and I know that you will need me to correct you also. So the first thing is this mutual agreement and understanding. The second thing is a chosen trust where we, what it looks like is we presume the best. We choose to presume the best in a person when we enter into a hard conversation. I, I just speaking from my own experience, it isn't just like an essential thing for this kind of fruitful conflict, but it is also a beautifully healing thing. When somebody's come to me with something where they said, yeah, you know, something you said, it hurt or we didn't understand or something, um, when they start with, but you know, we trust you, we know you, and that's why we're asking you this question. It's like, like I said, just a beautifully healing thing when somebody presumes the best instead of the worst for you, then, then it opens both hearts and you can enter into a conversation that helps. So that's the second thing, this chosen trust that presumes the best in the other. The third thing though, is a rock solid commitment to the relationship where there is no threat, where the relationship that this is happening in is not the thing on the line. That if all of this goes very badly, the relationship isn't up in the air, that basically the person has to say in their actions implicitly, Whatever happens, I will not leave you. I'm not, that's not what this is about. And that gives us security. It also allows the freedom to disagree, which is just a natural and regular thing. So I think it's three, these three things that, that separate secure conflict from a threatening conflict, this agreement, this trust, and a rock solid commitment. Now, I say all of this to you as a student of fruitful conflict and not as like a master practitioner like I said, I, I got a long way to go in this. And I know that, <laughs> that I'm speaking this to people who have been married for as long as I have been alive, or sometimes twice as long as I have been alive. So, so if you have wisdom, or if you need to, to correct something that I have said, then please, please do, because you're really the ones that have lived this most deeply and, and have some wisdom in it. It makes sense that we have a hard time with these sorts of things because we want to protect our hearts and we don't want to get hurt. And speaking for myself, it's easier to discard a relationship than it is to enter into a hard conversation out of love. But I do believe that love is worth awkward, uncomfortable conversations and even hurt feelings because though we are sensitive, we are also resilient. So, we want to like change this in our minds rather than if I love you then I'll never make you uncomfortable or hurt instead of that we say if I love you and I want what is good for you if I love you I will listen to you if I love you I will speak my mind to you if I love you sometimes I will disagree with you and number four maybe most importantly if I love you then I will forgive you and move on so the fruits of this homily I hope I hope what I don't want you to take from this homily, like, okay, let's get down to it. And then after this, everybody goes out and over burgers, everybody tells everybody what they hate about the other person, you know? Your kids are so annoying in mass, or your nose whistles and you sit next to me, or whatever. Wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be good? Yeah, we ended up in the newspaper because we had this great party planned and it was, it was just a, a wreck and everybody hated each other at the end. <laughs> but no, that's not actually what I want you to take from this. Instead, I want you to be asking, how do we build the foundations for healthy and secure conflict? How do we grow in this mutual agreement, in this chosen trust and presuming the best, and in this rock solid commitment that says, I will not walk away? Now, we haven't yet talked about the Lord, okay? He hasn't really been mentioned, but he is right at the heart of this because what we're talking about is the love that we learn from God. This is the way God has loved us, that we are to imitate, that he chooses what is good for us, 
and he will not leave. So he, he models this especially in that third thing that we need in commitment because he's made a covenant with his people. He has locked himself in with us and bound him to us, himself to us so that he can't leave, so that he will never leave. So he can say, however you offend me, whatever you do, or however sometimes my words or what I ask of you may, might hurt you, I will never leave you. And so it's this covenant relationship that we have with God that also binds us to each other. Because we're not here because we all have great feelings toward each other or we like each other or we know each other. We're here because we love God and he has gathered us here. So the foundation that love, that healthy conflict is built off of is not my feelings or yours. Those are pretty shaky. But the love of God that has been poured out into our hearts and that has brought us here, that has formed this parish and this community. And this is the love. This is the only reason why we can enter into these things, because of our confidence in God's forever unconquerable and everlasting love for us. So this is the love that will bring us forward to true and greater love.